bit of delay, but we're back live for our full interview with Alina Villasante. She's the founder of Peace Love World. She brought it to QVC as one of our QVC entrepreneurs, part of Courtside, which is the digital series sharing their stories. So Alina, I, I did some research and I have to tell you, when you did I a great saw, job. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> when I saw that you were in the aviation business and then you went into designing. And I am again, by the way. And then you're back in the, okay, and tell I'm us back. that story. Yes, I'm so interested. So which part do you want, the now or the then? Start back. <laughs> Bring us okay. forward. Yeah. So in 1999, I started a traditional love party for all my girlfriends. You know, we're all businesswomen. We're raising children. And in this country, for whatever reason, we just don't have time for things outside of our everyday life. So I picked the week after Valentine's because my son was born on Valentine's Day to celebrate the women in my life that I really love and treasure and appreciate. And I just wanted to spend that one night celebrating us. Uh, mm -hmm. It started out with, you know, my grandmother, my mother, my daughter, and it was very nice and pure until it got a little wild because, you know, women alone are so much fun. <laughs> they, they Women bring it. That's what I have to say. I mean, let me tell you that we actually hired a guy from Costco to be our bartender for the first party. It was so funny. <laughs> Did you and just then, approach him at Costco and say, hey, yeah, like, come. hey, you want to work? He was really nice helping us with something. And then we ended up, you know, I think we hired a firefighter, but it was really all in fun. And, and we, this party ended up becoming really famous. So I was making clothes and jewelry. And wow. that night, you know what I noticed that women around women are, they're just so fun and they just kind of let go. They're not really trying to impress anyone. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was so great. And we actually still have the love parties and dance on tables. And, you know, my daughter and her friends have kind of taken it over now. Oh, that's uh, awesome though. Yeah, I created I created little monsters, but it was <laughs> a lot of fun and it was all about really celebrating life and each other and you know the the most beautiful thing about being a woman and being a friend is mm -hmm. that when you say something to your friend that you're struggling with and she can um be compassionate because she's felt the same thing and she shares right. it with you, you know that's really what the love party is about. You know, not mm. feeling alone in those times of struggle, right? And then of just course. celebrating the beauty of it all. You know, like you tell somebody, you know, my son's failing math. I don't know what's going on. And, you know, yeah. oh, my son's an A student. No, that's not really what you want to hear. You want to like, it's okay. That teacher's hard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or we started off with our son failing too. You know, you want to yeah. hear. You just want to know that you're okay, you know, right? Exactly. So that's what really at the love party is about. And I love that the love party actually embodied sharing. I mean, it really did involve you coming forward, sharing who you were, and accepting others as well. So you created Peace Love World. Where did the name from Peace Love World even come from? That is the most exciting story. So anybody who has a dream, anybody, yeah. and what's the first thought? Oh, I'm sure somebody has that. Or that's so, because Peace Love World is honestly so um, well-known. As a basic, term? No, the words are so yeah. basic that you would never think nobody has it, right? Mm -hmm. So I remember that I was doing these designs in my aviation business. And all of a sudden, I went to bed and it was like the middle of the night. And I thought, peace, love, world. So I immediately got up to check if the name was taken and it wasn't. I call up my best friends. One of them was like a tech girl. I said, oh, my God, buy this name right now. I can't even believe it's available. <laughs> and yeah, and then there was still something missing. I was doing all the um, the affirmations, but just uh -huh. the pictures, not the words. Okay. I was doing the affirmations, the black and white. It was really pretty, but there was just something missing, and I couldn't put my finger on it. And it's my cousin's birthday, and a very good friend of mine, one of my best friends, brings me a present. She okay. made me a shirt that says, I am love. And I looked at her, I said, oh, my God, that's, that's what's it. missing. So next to the affirmation, to the symbols... I put these affirmations and Peace Love World was born, by the way, 2008 in a terrible recession where people were looking for something more to feel better. And I, wow. I, I know probably I'm going rolling on with this question, which no, should it, should, is there like a point. period I should have put already? Nope. That, <laughs> okay. That's what this is so, about. It's all about just talking. Okay. So just like today, and trust me, there's nights I don't sleep. There's moments where I'm very afraid. I always have my Jesus pen with me to remind me that there's something bigger than ourselves out there. Mm -hmm. But I, I work out, 
I eat well. I listen to good music. I try to keep my mind, my body, my soul full and busy because yeah. when I stop, I'm just like everybody else. And that fear builds in. And then I have a really few close people that I can call that their faith level is like beyond anything. That's great. And they're, yeah. And, and I just call them and I say, I need a boost. I need, tell me like, yeah. what's going to happen? Where are we? And where's the cure? And how many more people have to suffer? And, you know, because I mean, really in this time, one of the things, and I have to practice this myself also is that we can't be self-absorbed. We have to be givers. We have mm -hmm. to care. We have to come together as a community. And, you know, Peace Love World, yes, it's an apparel, lifestyle, home, jewelry brand. But it right. really is based on the source of, you know, being better than yourself. You know, yes. whatever you're feeling, put that affirmation out there, especially the day you don't feel it. Because especially. that's when you need, when you're not happy, put on that happy person shirt. When yeah. you don't feel feel loved, say that you are loved, fake it till you make it because the reaction of others will instantly bounce off right back at you. So if you put happy person, somebody may smile at you and that smile goes such a long way. Especially and today, today. I, where I put feeling blessed feeling and I am blessed. feeling blessed because, you know, I mean, so many reasons, right? Well, and that's the thing is reminding that there are reasons to feel blessed and that we do have this option to connect with one another. And there is joy even through all of this pandemic and everything that's going on. So I appreciate you sharing that. I have a question, though, right off the top of my head. <laughs> Where do you come up with these these affirmations? Like, do you just my like, that's living? It. So this yeah. morning I'm working out and I call my daughter because you know, you know, sometimes when I'm on air and I interrupt the host or I, I'm just so passionate. It could be my, you are. my Latin roots. I don't know. But I get so excited about things because I know where they were born. Yes. So I'm working out and I'm thinking hope, strength. Um, uh, Mia, what did I tell you? Anyway, I know. I see. I forget. <laughs> but you say so good I call her. I call her up and I go, we need to do an Instagram that basically says all these words and at the end, say, in the midst of my fear, because I couldn't sleep last night, I start getting afraid. Or if I watch okay. the news, I start getting very afraid. Or when I look outside and there's no planes, no boats, no cruise ships, barely yeah. any cars, you know, I, I start semi-panicking. And then you got to let the faith build in. And that's where you Peace Love to. World is really born because really it's a brand that stands for something and that really lifts people to the next level. When I say mm -hmm. I infuse energy in it, trust me that I do. I'm running do. and I come up with affirmations. I'm, I'm crying and I come up with an affirmation. You know what I'm saying? That is, it's true. It's, but that's, and what that's I feel, point. everybody feels. That's the thing, that we yeah. are so much more alike than we think. And we are on a level playing field today. A level playing Thank field. Thank you. Yes. We I absolutely agree. are. Which we always are. Mm -hmm. But today... We you know. notice it more than ever. And all I can tell you is one of the reasons Peace Love World became so strong is because I traveled the world in my aviation business. And what I learned is that everybody everywhere in every country wants the same thing. They want to yeah. feel loved. They want to feel happy. They want to feel joy. That's really the formula that we're all looking for. Well, and it's so basic and it sounds so it. like, you know, hi, I want to be happy. No, it's everyday work. I read the book Mastery of Love every six months. When I become a little catty is not the word. What's the word, mama? My daughter will tell me, trust me. When... <laughs> I can hear her, yeah. Um, so when I become anything, whether it be insecure or, or you know, kind of short or whatever, I know that I got to take a look at myself. Wait, did I lose you? Oh, no, I don't hear you. Where did you go? Where's the IT man? A text came in and I can Is it going?
Oh, there you are. Hi. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. Yes. Were we live during all that again? I'm sure we were. Yes, I'm sure we were. <laughs> I, and I will say there's a lot of people who are tuning in. I'm seeing that someone even said, I buy a lot of your clothes from my mom in a nursing home and everyone loves them. So there are, oh, thank you. And there are a lot of people who are listening to this message. They're wearing and your I message right now. I love them. I, mm-hmm. I, I love my people it's you have no idea when somebody sends me a message that's not so nice I'm like but why you know we're all just doing our best you know and and perception sometimes is not reality we're all just doing our best that is true well uh, speaking of your best I just had someone say wow my daughter is in aviation as well so we got to go back so you started in high standard aviation and then you transitioned but now you're and then I tra- back in that. <laughs> so our company sold and we had uh-huh. a non-compete for a few years and Peace Love World exploded overnight. No experience. I mean, I actually ordered all this stuff with not no idea where I was going to sell it. I went to my first show wow. and I didn't even know I had to have order forms because in aviation, you go to the shows and you tell people about your business and then you connect mm-hmm. later. But in apparel shows, you bring forms and people pre-order for the seasons. This is true. I was like, (laughs) why do we have to have all these seasons? I'm like, you could wear this all year long. But it was really funny because I had no clue what I was doing. But I loved the product. And, you know, product Mm -hmm. is king, right? So here I was, sold my company. I was really forced into Peace Love World because, you know, I started. I have the first picture. I have to ask my assistant for it. When all the boxes came in with the inventory... Yes. And I looked at her, I go, what are we going to do with all that? So like I had no idea. <laughs> and here I am. Yeah. I didn't have the, the, I didn't have the accounts or anything at the time, but here I am 11 years later. And again, going through a really hard time where for me, it's a huge reminder of why peace love world is so relevant in so many ways. You know, mm-hmm. it's not just buy my product so I can make a sale. It's buy my product and feel good and, and grow to the next level somehow. I had a conversation with my partner this morning. And I said, you know, I was listening to Oprah on Deepak Chopra. Oprah and Deep, Yeah, I was listening to him this morning. Love. And one of the things it says that when you have pain, to bring it on, you know, bring it on and feel it until the lesson is learned. Yeah. Right. So I was calling my partner saying, you know, sometimes when you feel something, the objective is to take it, feel it and then learn and grow from it because you've got to learn and you've got to grow. You can't stay in the same place. So all the rejections, all the pains, all the disappointments, they're just supposed to be something that teach you something to be just a better human in the next phase or the next day or the next week. Right. Well, and also you have to think of it too, as there's opposition in all things and that's how you grow. So I think absolutely. That is a, a and nobody's going to love you or what you make mm-hmm. all the time. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> that is true. Unfortunately, we cannot have everyone love everything. No. That we create. Wouldn't so, that be great? I, I would sign me up, please. But then <laughs> we don't too. learn. Then we don't I know. Learn. I know. So I just have to ask you, because I noticed while doing some research also that you ended up creating this brand. So many people loved it. That even, and I find it ironic, that the NBA, which is one of the four major league professional associations, said, I want you to create clothes for the women and for yes. others. Who and love- the Dallas Cowboys, yes. which was amazing. But I, I actually went to the game and the suite with Jerry Jones was just amazing. But yeah, so what an honor. We're Heat fans here in Miami. I have four brothers who are sports fanatics and two sons that are sports fanatics. And it just kind of made sense. They reached out to me and more and more people were just wearing peace, love world of the games. So we were in the playoffs actually. So okay. I made a line. I didn't have an NBA license yet, but you were allowed to sell in their immediate stores. Things were flying. There were lines of people. It was, inc- it was crazy. That's so I awesome. remember when we went to the playoffs and we won, we literally had a team of people waiting in the middle of the night with the machines ready to print the championship shirts. What an experience. Oh my God. It was so euphoric. I mean, it was crazy. Oh my goodness. I feel like as an entrepreneur, that moment has to be etched into your brain and you're just thinking, could it get any better? Like what? I mean, I can't even imagine the rush that you would get. No, the rush and then going to New York to the NBA offices and getting an NBA license, which let me tell you was very hard because I think there's like 37 team colors 
I, I don't remember, but yeah, on a, from a business standpoint, it's really difficult. I mean, I had to hire a licensing person and an MBA person and a Dallas Cowboy person, and it was a lot of fun. And I love the sports world because people oh, are just passion. They're the passion to the max. And it's kind of like, in a way, a non judgmental world. Yeah. I, I can't explain it, but they're just mm-hmm. so happy to win. <laughs> you know, that's that, like they're all they want to do is win, right? And, all they want to do and, is win. And then wear their apparel. So, yeah, it's so amazing to even see the, the cam on top and see my Peace Love World items on it. And yeah, it, it's just amazing. And right now they're not playing, it's crazy, but. Yeah, That's, and, I know we're not right And now. the people I work with from the NBA and from the Miami Heat, just beautiful, beautiful people. Oh, so speaking of meeting people, what would you say is one of the most unbelievable people that you've met by your journey and oh. through going into everything? <laughs> can I brag? <laughs> I mean, if it's the most amazing person okay. you've met, you can tell me who it is. So Oprah came to my house. <laughs> But let me tell you how that. No, 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 it was amazing. Actually, you can YouTube and find it. But um, the the funny thing is, Jill, who is one of her production people, who is now one of my besties, they call my office. uh, They say Harpo Studios would like to speak to Alina Viasante, whatever. And they claim that my my assistant claimed at the time that she said I wasn't available for two weeks. Or vice versa. She says that yeah. my assistant told her that. My assistant said that they said they wouldn't know. So we're always saying that it was your fault, my fault. So of fault. course, I, I couldn't wait five minutes. I go, what do you mean Harpo Studios called? Yeah, they have an idea for you and they'd like to talk to you in two weeks. I go, I can't sleep for two weeks. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. You're like, I need to know right this second. Yeah. This so anyway, is. I called them. Long story short. I mean, I could tell that that has to be a whole nother YouTube because it's a crazy story. But oh I goodness. went there on an empty plane in a blizzard. The samples ended up in L.A. and I was in Chicago and oh, everything course. that could go wrong did. Yeah. But it really turned out great. I was the merchandising person for her Life You Want tour. I mean, when I tell you, I'll never forget that um, Adam Glassman calls me from O Magazine and he says, Alina, um, is everything going to be on time? And I said, oh, absolutely. Like, I hope so. (laughs) Immediately I hang up and I call the father of my kids like, oh my God, is everything going to be on time? (laughs) And we were like flying somebody here, flying somebody there. You know, at the end of it all, it was an amazing 12 week journey. Uh, She's the most magical person I've ever met. Her team I have fallen in love with so many people on her team. She has the hardest working, most loyal, most soulful people. And I will oh, never wow. forget it. And when they were in Miami, we mm-hmm. had like a party. And whoever I had to work the party, I said, don't come thinking Oprah's coming. Because I didn't know she was right. coming. And I wanted to be excited that her team was coming. Mm-hmm. And that was enough for me. And if Oprah came, okay, that was like, you know, well, Oprah and Gail came. <laughs> and Gail. It was amazing. It was, I remember saying to her for one minute, can I just like enjoy you for one second? You're like in my house. <laughs> just bask in your she, aura. You know, when she speaks, she just comes from such a true place. Right. She's got this power in her voice from just life and experience. And it's, you know, it was great. It's true. And I don't think I, these were any of my questions, right? I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I get into it. I'm like listening to it's you. It's okay. Like, hey, I'm questioning. I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go back to my questions. Anyways, as someone who's built a brand that collaborates and has been recognized, obviously, by some big names, and you've collaborated with some really big names, during this limited time of quarantine, how do you take all that creativity that you have manifested and used, and what are you doing now? I mean, we all have these limitations of boundaries with this epidemic. And so how are you being yeah. creative within and really doing what you do best, but without being able to really leave your house, right? Yeah, so um, yeah, so I'm pretty much with me, my partner, two of my children, and mm-hmm. we're just like the same people all the time. It, so it has been a great time of creativity because I feel that I design best in the hard times, in the hardships. Oh, I think they're the most authentic, the most transparent. I um, identify with people, you know, I know someone very close to me that had lost in their family. So I'm very careful with my words. Um, It teaches you the closer it comes to home, 
that we are all so privileged and never speak from a privileged place. So mm-hmm. knowing that somebody close lost someone um, changes the dynamic of my QVC shows. It changes the dynamic of this because sometimes when you haven't had the pain or the loss or had somebody near you have it, you may speak from a privileged place because you are blessed and you are lucky, uh, but not everybody is. So it's made my affirmations more of strength, of everything will be okay, of hope. I actually put on my hope silicone bracelet uh, this week, which I hadn't been wearing. Uh And it just, it actually puts more love and compassion in what I already do. And it's, it's a little reminder. It's a little reminder of why I started Peace of World, why I'm still relevant 11 years later. And it's God's little messages that kind of say, Hey, you know, come back down and this is where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And not, not that I ever left it, but you get comfortable in the good life and in the, in the easy things. Right. Definitely. Um, Today, I just shut my eyes for a second and manifested um, a sky full of airplanes <laughs> because, you know, it's like the economy again, moving and people moving mm-hmm. because it's just all my friends all over the world text me and they're all doing the same thing we are. And it's so crazy. It's it is. so crazy that the whole world and it's Lent. Yeah. I don't know about Easter. that. The week it's of Easter. Easter. Mm-hmm. So I'm going with, I'm going with, there's a bigger message here and life will come back. Nothing lasts forever. Not the good, not the bad. Yeah, We will be back. But I definitely think we should all be writing down notes of what we felt during this time so that we don't forget when mm-hmm. things are back to normal. Right. I mean, there is the new uh, normal. This is, this too shall pass. I mean, that is something that you read in the scriptures even all the time, this too shall pass. So it's, this is our moment. It's a season, like you said earlier, and we're going to endure it together. And so I appreciate that you just said that. Now, and I've I gotten have... to know you guys better, I have to tell you. Because <laughs> we're <laughs> having to do things like this, right? No, it's crazy. All the people like Pat yesterday and my design team and just having to be on Zoom, my entire attention is just on yeah. you where normally you're running and you're taking a call and you're from there. What are you really giving your 100% attention to? Oh, what a great thing to take away I'm, from I'm like I'm like all over the place. Oh, and, wow. it, and it, no, really. And, and I too. know that about myself. And I think that this has kind of taught us to pause and focus yeah. on what you are doing. For sure. Now, as someone who brought this global luxury brand, why did you want to come to QVC? What about QVC said, peace, love, world needs to be here. Everything. Everything. Who I want to I'll tell with. you the two, the two greatest. First of all, three years into QVC, I have to tell you that I have a new family. I fight for my business. I work hard. I love the people who actually make me who I am there. The people that, mm-hmm. you know, fight for my brand and really yeah. help me be the best me. Uh, I listen to them just like they listen to me. I feel like we have a really good relationship. But the two main reasons were that I could dress everyone from double XS to three X. I could mm-hmm. never have done that on my own. It's not like people think just go bigger. No, it's not like that. There's no. a formula and I wasn't an expert in that. And I think in today's world, you know, we are all beautiful and it's a great message to to share that with everyone, you know, that they everyone can can have a piece of you. Um, The second one is the quantities are so high that the prices are so much sharper. So instead of me buying 500 of something, you know, they're buying 5,000 of something Mm -hmm. and there's no middle person because when I make something, then I have to wholesale it. Then they have to sell it to the end person. So right Right. there, you're kind of doubling in price because there's a middle. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's been, it's been great that I can make things that are affordable for everyone. And yes, I know that sometimes my things are a little more expensive, but it's all the details. It's a thumb holes. It's a red lines. It's a leather patch. The fabric. It's, the, it, it's a fabric. It's a twill tape in the back. If they've asked mm-hmm. me, well, can we remove that to save some money? And I don't want to lose the integrity of the brand because then I just feel like it'll look like everybody else's. There's so much. I mean, think about it. Most people will sell this garment plain right. and it's beautiful. But I put the thumb holes, I put the, I am blessed. 
I put these red lines on mm-hmm. them that are embroidery. I mean, every little thing costs more, but it's who I am. And mm-hmm. I don't want to remove what made Peace Love World what it is. So it's well, just a little bit more. <laughs> something, that, something that you just triggered in my mind is that for you, love is in the details. And so when you bring us Oprah details, said that at my house. Oh, I, well, then. Wait, can I quote unquote? Yes. Love is in the details and you nailed it. <laughs> Okay, but well, love is in better. the details. <laughs> it's love true. is in the details. Mm-hmm. Love in a relationship, in a man, woman, 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 man, whatever. You know, it's in the details of what you put into it. So mm-hmm. in the garment, it's the same thing. I'm just giving it a little extra love. And if oh. people don't want to charge me to put it on there, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> right, unfortunately. Right. So speaking of love, obviously at the boundary and the foundation of your brand, you have incorporated your daughter into the brand. And you mentioned, I know in another interview that the legacy of leaving this on was really something you were inspired to do. So tell me about bringing in kind of the family into your passion and your dream and also what that's like. Well, it's so funny. (laughs) I went to a French bakery the other day, you know, support locals. I went to pick up some croissants. Oh, good. And I see the way the girl talks to the father and the son comes out kind of grumpy. I'm like, are you guys all related? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I know. Work environment. I know. (laughs) So I live in the same environment. So my children are all around me. The father of my kids is around me. My father, uh, my daughter-in-law, we're all kind of working together. There's like five businesses, but we're all kind of working together. So I don't have work-life balance. Um, I kind of wish I did sometimes, but I don't know how. I don't know how to work without my family. I don't know. I just don't know how. It feels like I broke up or if there's a loss. Yet it is harder sometimes because, you know, with your employees or your team members, there's this level of, you know, things you would not yeah, <laughs> with your family, there's not that level of separation, you know, right. it's, it's kind of like, you're judged, you're there. And like, Mom, how could you, you know do that too much? <laughs> yeah, or my daughter say, Mom, take that post. I mean, sh- seriously, I'll post something. And she'll within seconds. You're not posting that take it down. <laughs> I'm like, why can't I just do me? But oh. yeah, so I don't know how to separate it. But then it's a beautiful thing, too. Because in many ways, I have taught myself, which hasn't been easy, Mm -hmm. you know, you start and you're controlling and you're building and all that. I have start to let go little by little and let them shine on their own because they have so much beauty to give the world. They have so much uh, to give that I got to let them be them. Yeah. And Mia, when she went away to college, my daughter who does all my marketing and social, She's very Uh, talented, by the way. She's amazing. And she's actually in the middle of getting her master's, running a company, taking care of Peace Love World with my daughter-in-law and her team. And it's not easy because I have my own opinions on how I want things. But at the same time, I got to step back and let them do it their way too because we're family. Yeah. You understand? And if it wasn't, I would say, no, no, but I want this, but I want that. But when you're family, you're almost kind of putting down another person's idea, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? It does does seem that way. So it's made me grow a lot and watch them evolve and shine in ways that is Mm -hmm. so beautiful. And on top of that, you know, I feel like I'm leaving my legacy behind. And, you know, it's they already know the voice of Peace Love World and they're not Mm -hmm. trying to change it. They really honor me every day in being my best self. They're not trying to make peace, love world, their voice. They're keeping my voice. So I actually appreciate them very much for that. Uh, I think that says a lot when you have, it's about teaching and then letting them lead. And I think that goes right. to family. It and it's to- hard as a mom. Cause you know how we are. It's like, you know, no, they're ready. You, you know, you talk to them ready. somehow or you, or you want to think you did. Right. <laughs> yes. I'm sure. I'm sure. So you said something It's kind of one of my favorite quotes that I actually read. And it said, failure is just a kick that says, wake up. You have more to learn. You have more to do. And you have places to go. So keep going. Oh, yes. You know, I don't want any more life lessons. But (laughs) yeah, failure is 
every time I've been rejected and I mean, I even had a store tell me, um, our customer is not that nice. You need to be a little bitchier. Can I say that oh. word? Well, Will happens. that be a blooper? Will that be a blooper? <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> Apologies. But that's what they said to me. Okay. So, you know, it's not that I'm all like happy, happy. Oh, no, it's not. I mean, I, I have everything just like you do. So, yeah, you know, I, I'm writing a book. And then you're trying to find somebody to help you with this. This person doesn't want it. That publishing company does. You know, there's stores that want your brand, stores that don't. There's hardships and partnerships. There's hardships and, I mean, not everybody's going to love you. Not everybody's going to want you. Not everything's going to turn out the way you imagined it. Mm -hmm. And every kick is a message to just be true to yourself and to your passion and keep going. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's been hard. I had, um, I had a difficult partnership once that taught me a lot and you know, it's, it's, it's hard. I've definitely gone through my struggles. It hasn't been easy. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I always say this, putting planes in the air is much easier than building a brand and being a designer. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's much because the aviation world is a very forgiving world and the less judgmental world where the fashion world is very critical. And like yeah. I said, nobody likes all the same shoes or the same tops or the same, no. even the same words. You know, I wouldn't wear that word. Well, you know, it's, it's tough, but you gotta, you gotta let go of the ego and just hear, mm -hmm. listen and evolve and, and stay true to you. Because I tell you what, the generation behind us, they're all transparent. But I mean, they are valiant though. The new generation. Yes. Too. Yes. And, and, Fakeness doesn't work in their world. Mm -mm. That is definitely true. Speaking Which of is good. Being, being true to who you are, you're Cuban. Were you born I'm in Cuban. Cuba? I was born in Cuba. My parents left in uh, 1961. Okay. Or 19, no, in 1960 when, okay. you know, yeah, the whole country, they left, they left with three kids and only the clothes on their back. I think I have one baby picture. Seriously, wow. one. And I'm super cute, by the way. No. <laughs> I believe it. But, I believe it. But, you know, we moved to New York in a one-bedroom apartment. I slept in the kitchen. My mom says it's not true, but it is. You know how the kitchen has a little nook yes. in the back? Because my mom didn't want me to sleep with the boys. And then I had two brothers following right after. We lived in Elmhurst, New York, which is crazy. It's where the number one pandemic is right now. Yeah, that is true. And so, you know, I, I was raised with parents that back then, they had to rebuild their lives. Uh -huh. Um I thank them for that today because I think they created five children that uh, my brothers are just amazing. They are, uh, they're, you know, I think that all of us are, you know, very humble in many ways. And I think it has to do with my parents taught us mm -hmm. and it's, you know, it's a beautiful thing because, you know, when you go through something like this or 2008, it doesn't even compare to what they went through. Hopefully it won't get to that point for us. Right. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine my mom was, um, yeah. my mom was 20 and my dad was 27 and they had to start all over. And my dad never saw his family again wow. because they were on the other side and they didn't come back. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. Can you imagine being, when I was writing my book, I remember starting going, Oh my goodness. Like you don't really think about it, but imagine mm -hmm. never seeing your family again. It was, yeah, it was tough, but Look, it, it was a great generation. We, I, I think we are a great generation, a very hardworking generation, very yeah. humble. And I'm grateful for whatever it taught us and what my parents taught us. Definitely. Perseverance seems to be one of those Perseverance, traits. absolutely. Mm -hmm. That yep. you definitely embody. Raising five kids, working, going to college. That's what they did. Wow. And they that... both had the same job their whole life. He worked for Texaco Oil. Okay. And he was a controller for Trinidad and... And my mom was marketing Delta Airlines and they, all, they had the same job their whole life. and they retired from the same job. We moved to Atlanta. We went, we went to New York, I think for 12 years, Atlanta for eight years. And then Miami, four days after I graduated from high school, I thought life was over. My parents just ruined oh, my sure. entire life. Cause you were, you were in that <laughs> How case. could you ruin my life? <laughs> so many, so many Forget about paying the bills can relate. I'm sure. I know. 
<laughs> well, what a different, I mean, I just want to bring that up. What a different world. I mean, because there were a lot of people in still today who have one job and they have it their whole life. But as an entrepreneur and as someone who is constantly evolving and creating, you really have to have a different set of characteristics that embodies you. Would you say that there's something, there's a characteristic that you feel has really just navigated you through your experience as an entrepreneur and that maybe you would say all entrepreneurs might have? Yeah, I do think that I'm not saying you can't become an entrepreneur, but I think it's no, very personality based. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got to take risks. You've got to believe in something and go for it. I mean, okay, so an accountant on the other side would look at you and say, wait, but you could lose this, this, and that. An entrepreneur basically thinks they can go and they're so passionate and believe so much in it that the risk isn't even part of the equation. The risk is part of the reward because they're like, well, exactly from that. (laughs) Yeah. And, and really it's like that. And, and, you know, when is, when do you give up? And Mm -hmm. most entrepreneur entrepreneurs don't. And so am I afraid today? Uh, when I think about it a little, but I think that faith over fear has to kick in mm-hmm. when I, you know, when I see all the aviation people and no planes in the air and yeah, I'm a little, I get a little afraid, but because I, I just look at the whole world in a pause, but then I say, okay, no world pause, spiritual pause. What are we learning here? And you know what I think about all the time? What right. are we going to miss about these moments? Because I am not going as fast as I was going. I am right. differently. But I feel like I'm taking better care of myself. Oh, same. Uh, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, in my relationship with my husband, even like we're able to really connect and communicate because we're literally in the same house right. all day long. You know, there's some. And you're always running. We're always right. running. Like we're running out the door to go to here, go to there, on the phone, doing this. Will mm-hmm. I change? Probably not because it's my DNA. But definitely I've learned and appreciated and I don't want to forget. Mm. I do not want to. I even have a, a pandemic um, I, album, photo album that I'm putting, you know, like the empty streets and this and thing, all this, like all yeah. these things in my house so that I don't forget. And I can tell my grandchildren, you know, we survived what this. this really was. Yeah, we survived this. And hopefully, you know, hopefully. Like I said, it's not just us. There's so many people in the world suffering and, you know, I, 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 I'd rather not even go into that conversation, but it's, uh, you know, it it's, is life right now for sure. It's life right now. Mm-hmm. So we want to be able to support you as one of our QVC entrepreneurs. Where can we follow you, follow the brand and just be able to share in the journey? So on Instagram, oh, I started a TikTok. I don't think I'm very good at it, but I started I one. Even <laughs> <gone> there. <laughs> I'm still trying to do the voice thing. But um, so Peace Love Alina is my Instagram, my personal. Peace Love World is my mm-hmm. business one. Okay. And the stories, you always know what's going on. And then um, I am, is I am Peace Love Home? Peace Love World Home is my home collection. Perfect. And Facebook, it's Alina Villasante, Peace Love World. TikTok, it's Alina Villasante. I think I have like five followers on TikTok. Hey, <laughs> I, maybe I need to join and I'll come follow you. <laughs> Go follow me. <laughs> I, it's so much fun whenever I'm with my partner's little girl. I'm like, can we do a TikTok? Yes. <laughs> you got, that's what's going on right now. Oh, yeah, my it's, goodness. It's just fun to watch and it's entertaining. Mm-hmm. But yeah, with, with, uh, I, I actually filmed on Peace Love Alina. I can't even believe I did it. I did my own roots. I mean, I don't know about, well, you're, you're still young, but I, um, I've never dyed my hair actually. So I well, yeah, well, I never did either until I had to. So <laughs> every 10 days, you know, some little hairs peek out there. Uh-huh. So I did my own formula. I did my own hair. Look at this. Ooh. Now I did. So I had a few grays on my eyebrows, full disclosure, Okay. And so I got the color and they turned black. So I called my hair and go, oh, my eyebrows are black. They, <laughs> so, you look good though. <laughs> thank you. But yeah, my, they're usually more blondy. But yeah, so it, it's been a little crazy around here. It, and today that. I put on uh, Amazon, I'm looking for hair cutting scissors. 
<laughs> oh boy. Well, please film that. That would be interesting for sure. <laughs> okay. You just showed us jewelry. I want to know everything in, in the line before we go. I want to know. Oh, there's so much what, beautiful stuff. All the things that you create. Cause what categories you're in more than one. Well, we have home. So there's mm-hmm. lots of pillows behind me Cute. because I look, me casa's to casa. Whoop, whoop. Oh, and pet is coming out at fourth quarter. Oh, oh, and let me tell you up. something. You're going to die. <laughs> it's amazing. My blankets, five-star rating, sell out every time. We have beautiful new colors coming. The pillows on are a nice little sale right now. They come in threes. Uh, the jewelry's Ooh. amazing. These, I like the, jewelry. the minute they hit, you've got to buy them because they sell out within a day. It's true. And I think I they're that. replenishing now in April. And then, of course, you know, the apparel line. Mia, what else do we have? Oh, oh, oh. June 26th, TSV okay. on my new workout collection called Mind Body Love. I am all The pants that. are the most amazing fabric, and the waistband has this rouging that makes your waist look tiny. Okay. And it's called right. Mind Body Love. Okay, so that's coming in yes. June. Oh, we got us a little yes. excited. Well, Alina, thank you so much for spending yeah. time with us. I love you. Can, we, can you tell them what you do real quick? Because it was all about me. Yes, please tell them what you do because I, they're not even going to care about anything I said when you tell them what you do. Oh, no. I do the skeleton, which is a winter Olympic sport where you go face first down the bobsled track about 90 miles per hour sometimes. And there's no breaks. You just go. And something that I have learned that I'll share that I feel like you would appreciate in skeleton, when you hit the wall going like 80 miles, 90 miles per hour, we say embrace the hit. Because the hit can actually help redirect you so your path is straight and you can actually have a better run. So that is something that I've learned from Skeleton that I feel like I can share with Peace Love World. <laughs> I don't even understand how you do that. You you got to learn for sure. You can't just go down. <laughs> That's for and sure. And what is it like? Is, is it just like this thrill? Like you have this thrill to go that speed and to like, what is it? I want to know because I'm sure everybody wants to know. No, I would say that it has nothing to do with a sense of adrenaline for me. Now, for some people it does. But for me, it's really about just you can't do the same run every single time. It has to be slightly different. There's too many variables. You know, whether the ice is soft or hard, whether the sun is shining on it, whether your sled is smooth, whether there's a little divot. I mean, there's so many different things. So I just appreciate that every time you go down, you work with what you've got. You make split second decisions. And that is what energizes me. It's that even if you mess up, you can still do better. I did a terrible run in February down a 15-turn track in Park City, and I had the best time I've ever had. But I hit the wall, and I slammed in, and I slid against this, and I was like, during it, I thought, I'm having the worst run of my life. And then I get down, and I was like, that was your fastest time. And I just thought... Oh, really? Yeah. I'm like, you just never Wait, but don't you get nervous? Doesn't your husband get worried? (laughs) Yeah. He does, but he's actually had a funny experience. And your mother's probably freaking out because I'd be oh, freaking out. She can't exactly watch the sport. She, she oh, just like I wouldn't cheer. be able to. Yeah, but it's it's a different. It's definitely different. I mean, I'm from Texas. I did not grow up near snow. I'm half Nigerian. Like <laughs> me doing a winter sport is pretty. It's pretty foreign, but it's been an incredible journey, and I hope I can continue to do it for 2022 in the winter. I'm so yeah. in awe of you. Oh, you're so like sweet. so I, in awe. I mean, I should have been interviewing you. No, 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 no. I wanted to hear about you because that's what this is about. <laughs> I get to, we don't get to tell your full story all the time on QDC because we've got time limits. We've got things we have to do. And this whole series is about being able to hear your journey and hear your stories and hear the inspiration because that's why you're at the queue. That's why we're here at the queue to tell stories and share them with people. So well, that's really why QVC that. is so amazing, right? Yeah. A lot of people say they just turn it on because they like to know that, that these people are in your house. And honestly, it's true. There's no bad news on QVC. I mean, we're really yeah. trying to just it, – it's, it's kind of like I don't ever feel like I'm selling. Like no. people say, oh, do you sell? I go, no, I don't. I talk about my product, and I'm just like crazy, you know, trying not to sure interrupt not. the host when I'm so excited about – Yesterday, Pat was my host, and I was Skyping yeah. from the house. And uh-huh. I'm like, there's a message in the pocket. And she's like, okay, no, no, the inside. And she's like, no, no, no open the inside. <laughs> were you on video or were you on call? Yes, I was on Skype. 
my gosh. That's the amazing. inside. I almost like got up to take my pants to show her the inside. <laughs> We're not going to do that. <laughs> no. Oh my goodness. Oh. But that's what, but that just shows you the, the entrepreneurs QVC brings to our customer and to anyone is are the ones who are passionate and excited about their brands. I mean, that's why some of our brands that we have are incredible because the amount of love and energy that's poured into them is extensive. And so that's, Oh my God. And we work so hard. I mean, isn't it like yeah. a crazy life? It's, it is. You're like on nothing. and off airplanes and, and, and being on air is the easy part. There's so much yeah. more that goes into it sure. before you go on air. That is By the so way, I did my own, my own hair and makeup. How did it come out? It came out <laughs> very well. Very well. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Alina, thank you so much for joining me here on Courtside. Thank we you. We appreciate it. We will be following you and your journey, and I hope that we will be talking to you again soon. I love you. Okay. I, I love can't you. wait to have a show with you again. Bye. I know. Soon to come. Bye. Bye. Tell me I said bye. Okay. Bye. bye she said. <laughs>